John Liming and I'm a graduate student of history at Liberty University and today's presentation is on the history of the Moravian Church in 18th century America. The Moravians are a little-known Protestant denomination which started out in Central Europe and spread throughout the world to include the American colonies. Uh, my thesis is that Moravians were more influential in the 18th century America than they are credited. Their influence was strongest in their efforts to evangelize the Native Americans, but other influences can be seen as well. The um, Moravians carried on the tradition of Jan Hus. Hus was a Bohemian Catholic priest who fought against the abuses he saw in the Catholic Church, and he desired a return to primitive Christianity, but he was burned alive for heresy. The churches influenced by Hus were initially in Moravia and Bohemia, areas located in what is now the Czech Republic. Uh, the church persisted despite persecution in these areas, and according to Jordan Hammond, the church was revived by Count Nicholas Ludwig von Sinzendorf in Saxony in 1722. The Moravians uh, would expand into the American colonies, uh, first moving to Georgia in 1734, uh, then resettling into Pennsylvania in 1740, where they started the settlements of Bethlehem and Nazareth, and then a contingent of Moravians uh, moved to North Carolina, where they found the settlement of Salem. The joint economies of Bethlehem and Nazareth uh, would support the Moravians' missionary ventures during the Moravians' early years in America. According to Joseph Hutton in his book, A History of the Moravian Church, the Moravian plan consisted of three major principles. First, to unite all Christians of all shades of belief in common devotion to a common Lord. The Moravians did not make an effort to expand their church at the expense of other churches, which may have had a detrimental effect on their expansion. The second part of the plan was to establish settlements. These settlements were set up to be communal uh, in practice, so the Moravians could finance the spread of the gospel, which brings us to the last part of the plan which was to preach the gospel to all men, civilized or savage. Catherine Engel in Moravians in the 18th century Atlantic world categorizes the civilized as the unchurched immigrants, uh, predominantly German, and the savages as the Indians, uh, for whose evangelization uh, the settlements were established in the first place. The primary focus of the Moravians uh, was their missionary work among the Indians. The Moravians were considered the premier missionaries of their time, and according to Thomas McHugh, the Moravian approach uh, to missionary work was successful due to high standards uh, for missionaries enforced by the elders of the Moravian Church and the realization that missionaries had to work within, from within the Indian culture and be an acceptance of the Indian way of, of life. When the missionaries worked with the Indians, uh, they were required to study the Indian language, train native assistants, teach Indians to read and write, to translate into the Indian language all the important parts of the Bible and hymns, hymns and other uh, material, to instill the principles of peace into the hearts of the converts, and to educate the congregation in the idea that whatever nationality it represents or tribal distinction it embraces, the Christian Indians are all one in the Lord Jesus Christ. Of these duties, uh, the Moravians believed that uh, learning the native language was the most important. They realized it was impossible to understand the Indian culture without understanding the language. In, con in conjunction with learning the Indian languages, Moravian missionaries moved into Indian villages where according to Jane Merritt in her article, Dreaming the Savior's Blood, they took part in the daily social and economic life of the Indians, as well as sharing their um, physical and spiritual well-being. David Zeisberger is considered to be the greatest of the Moravian missionaries. In his diary of David Zeisberger, a Moravian missionary among the Indians of Ohio, he described the mundane but critical uh, daily activities of a missionary. Zeisberger learned the Delaware and Iroquois languages and translated parts of the Bible and other useful texts into the Delaware language. Additionally, his description of events uh, such as a Chippewa war party returning from battle with five scalps and a Quaker prisoner shows not only his bravery, but
but also his tolerance for seemingly intolerable actions. Seisberger was the epitome of a Moravian missionary working within the Indian culture. The Moravians in America also influenced notable persons such as John Wesley, the founder of Methodism. According to Jordan Hammer, Hammond, uh, the Moravians introduced Wesley to the joy of hymn singing and its devotional and evangelistic usefulness, and also represented the communal discipline uh, Wesley sought to instill in the Oxford Methodist societies. Uh, this was not a one-way relationship as Wesley influenced the Moravians to partake of the Eucharist every Sunday as, instead of once a month. Some complaints against the uh, Moravians come from this article from the America, America's Historical Imprints Evans Collection. Um, and they present arguments against uh, the Moravians and Count Zinzendorf. To answer the charge that the Moravians were a sect or a dissenter religion, uh, Zinzendorf claimed the Moravians were a Protestant religion which had always preached a pure and simple gospel message. Zinzendorf was berated as promiscuous, as he sometimes preached as a Lutheran and other times as a Reformed. Uh, Zinzendorf was indeed an ordained Lutheran minister, and his ecumenical views are well documented. Uh, there are also comments made about how the Moravians conducted their services in German and their use of lots to make important ecclesiastical decisions as well as determining marriage partners. The Moravians in the French and Indian War, um, the Moravians held pacifistic views for the most part, and although they did not participate in war against the French and their allied Indians, the Moravians did take up arms to defend their settlements. Uh, additionally, a Moravian missionary named Christian Frederick Post was sent by the British uh, by himself to convince the Indians uh, the French were unable to win. According to an article by Glenn Weaver, Post was so persuasive he caused some French Indian allies to leave the French, which assisted in the British victory. Uh, during the Revolutionary War, uh, once again because of their pacifism, uh, the Moravians encountered some issues. Uh, they did uh, provide some support to the Patriot cause, although this aid was somewhat uh, grudgingly given. <clears throat> the Patriots housed British prisoners um, in Bethlehem, and this settlement was also used as a hospital where the French military commander, Marquis de Lafayette, Pectured here, uh, was treated. According to Gertrude Ward in John Etwine and the Moravians in the Revolution, uh, contact with American patriots had broadened their outlook so that the Moravians themselves uh, were starting to become true Americans. According to Joseph Hutton, there are three main reasons the uh, Moravian Church failed to spread throughout America during the 18th century. Firstly, Bishop Spangenberg, the very capable administrator, was called back to Germany to help fix problems with Count Zinzendorf's uh, financial issues. Uh, secondly, was the uh, Moravians' obsession with building self-isolating settlements like Bethlehem and Nazareth and Pennsylvania and Salem in North Carolina, as opposed to building individual congregations uh, throughout the country. Additionally, Davis pointed out that the Methodists, Presbyterians, and Baptists had made great strides in America during the 18th century, and the Moravians had likely missed an opportunity for expansion. Uh, thirdly, control of the finances for their day-to-day -day activities from the directing board in Germany proved to be a logistic nightmare given the geographic separation. Some other factors limiting the Moravian impact uh, was, as noted in the Moravian plan, their emphasis upon creating a united body devoted to the Lord, which while a lofty goal, obviously did not aid in the expansion of the Moravian church. In uh, Engel's article, Moravians in the 18th Century Atlantic World, she surmises that the British Empire in the 18th century actively encouraged Protestant settlement in her colonies, and this resulted in a hopelessly complicated religious establishment where anxiety rather than ecumenism was the norm. This created an atmosphere in which Zinzendorf's ecumenical plan was ineffective. Uh, according to John Weinlich in his article, uh, Colonial Moravians, their status among the churches, the Moravians came to America uh, as an under, underdeveloped church, and nobody, to include the Moravians, uh, knew exactly 
what the Moravian Church was, since Count Zinzendorf was still working this out. Uh, this caused problems for the Moravians in their initial years in America. Linford Fisher, in his article, I believe they are papists, related how in 1743 two Moravian missionaries in Connecticut were arrested for fear that they were converting Indians to Catholicism uh, in order to make them allies of the French. Although the Moravians were generally pacifist in their outlook, according to Jerry, Jared Bulkholder, it was not as codified as it could have been uh, such as it was with the Anabaptists and Quakers, uh, which leads to questions from non-Moravians and inconsistent application of that pacifism. According to Scott Paul Gordon in Patriots and Neighbors, some cruel neighbors uh, used the pretext of Moravian pacifism or refusal to take oaths in an attempt to gain, to gain Moravian land and property through the state militia law and the Test Act. In conclusion, uh, the Moravians set the bar for missionary work in the 18th century, and the churches of today would do well to follow their example. The Moravians would be more recognized for their work in the 18th century if not for certain factors. If perhaps they had been less ecumenical, they may have increased their membership and recognition. If the Moravians had been more careful not to be perceived as outsiders and promoted their congregations as opposed to their self-isolating settlements, um, they may have ex experienced growth like the Baptist or Methodist in the same time period. However, on the other hand, if the Moravians had been less ecumenical and ignored their settlements, then perhaps they would have lost that specialness, which enabled them to be the premier missionaries of their time. Thank you. Uh, please note the references used in this presentation, as well as the photo credits.